Otakon 2016, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Otakon was an anime convention held from August 12th through the 14th, 2016 at the Baltimore Convention Center in Baltimore, Maryland. This is the last year for Otakon in Baltimore before their move to Washington, D.C. Let's see how they did. For the good, registration this year was a lot better. We got there at 7 o'clock and there were no lines. Zero. No line con. They fixed their problems finally. Panel staff were really awesome. We had a little problem with one of our panelists. He had a registration issue. They dealt with it fast and effective. It was very, very nice, very good, and everything there was super smooth. This year, increased security was also a thing. A lot more random badge checks, especially in the Hilton, which I was entirely okay with. I, I like seeing more security around the convention center. It's nothing but a good thing. One of the standout panels of the con was the discotheque panel. They did an incredibly good job. Best industry panel, no question. They actually made their panel relevant. A lot of industry panels right now are nothing but marketing schemes. They talk about a lot of different stuff in their panel, which is really, really good. The Hilton, for the most part, was pretty good. The rooms themselves are okay, but the crowd in there was really cool. There wasn't a lot of noise. The elevators worked pretty well most of the time, and the connected sky bridge was really convenient. Check-in was super smooth this year. Everything went well. And this year, the sky bridge line control was probably the best I've seen it. There was one or two times they did have to stop the line in a certain direction to get more traffic through, but overall, the sky bridge was pretty well controlled. For the bad, what was terrible? The Viz and Funimation industry panel, especially their main one, for the most part, was complete garbage. Neither brought major announcements like they used to. It was mostly streaming stuff or pointless manga that really most people will not care about. It was actually very, very disappointing attending both these panels. They were both wastes of time. If you're not going to bring something important to announce, you might as well skip Otakon and go to another con and stop wasting our time. For the ugly, what should have been better? The Friday morning crowding was pretty severe before they opened the Artist Alley and the Dealer's Room. You really couldn't move around. It was a lot like 2014. It was just bumper to bumper of people, and you really couldn't move around too well. Honestly, the Dealer's Room, and this is something I felt for a long time, the Dealer's Room this year was particularly stagnant. There really wasn't anything spectacular in there. I went through the Dealer's Room a couple times, the pop vinyls looked okay, but I didn't know how to get them home without smashing them. But honestly, there was nothing in there that intrigued me. It just it, It's a boring dealer's room right now. There's nothing unique. I feel the convention center food took a step backwards this year. Other years, they'd have a nice selection of wraps and other things to eat. This year, there were more branded options, the big one being Nathan's Hot Dogs. And they had a variety of stuff around the convention center, but a lot of it was pretty well overpriced. And at some point, it got monotonous. Now, you could go outside the convention center if you wanted to die of heat stroke, which I didn't, so I just ate what was there at the time. The convent I will say the convention center sushi was not as bad as you th would think, but still, overall, the convention center food could use an upgrade. This year, the heat was really bad. There's nothing Otakon or the convention center could do about it, but especially in the flag lobby, the old wing of the convention center... You could tell the AC was struggling pretty hard. In the other parts and the hotel, the AC was actually pretty good. But the Baltimore Convention Center is sorely in need of an upgrade. Voice Actors After Dark was put in a really bad room this year. It was smaller than other years. After seeing the line, I knew I wasn't going to get in. It, it has been years since I've attended a Voice Actors After Dark. Is it a fun panel? Sure. But it's not worth waiting in line hours ahead of time. Finally, there were some panel technology issues. I ran into it in panel 7 during my presentation. I did not know the lower part and the sides of my panel was being cut off. I do build my panels to avoid this, but it was a much more serious issue than just my laptop. I ran into zero problems practicing this panel. Other panelists also ran into issues. There seemed to be a few other tech issues through other panels. And honestly, the crew they had this year was not an A crew. And I was pretty disappointed because at Otakon, you think it would be one of the best crews you could get. Overall, we do know that Otakon's attendance went back up this year. From 2015's 26,877 unique attendees, 
This year it went up to 28,000 paid attendees, and that's an estimated number because official numbers have not yet been released. This is the last year in Baltimore before Otakon moves to Washington, D.C., and this is something we need to be completely honest about. This is completely Baltimore's fault. They got rid of the Grand Prix, something that brought a lot of people to town. The riots happened. That hurt last year's Otakon. And we all know the Baltimore Convention Center, even with the new studies, is not going to get rebuilt. The city lacks the money. They lack the talent. They lack the people to push this plan through. We know it's not going to happen. Otakon is going to be in Washington, D.C. until at least 2024. I give the convention a B-, same grade as last year. I thought nothing was worse, but nothing was really better. It was just a pretty good all-around weekend. I thought the weekend went pretty fast and smoothly. And we'll have to see what Otakon does next year in Washington, D.C. It's going to be a big opportunity for growth. Already known there's over a million additional square feet for the con. And we'll just have to see what happens. Thanks for watching.